What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Too Pop to Handle. I'm your host, Andrew Nucatola, your pop culture best friend. And as always, I hope you guys are having a fabulous week. I hope everybody had fabulous weekends. My apologies that we are a day late this week. I had my gal pal Julie in town. She's here from LA, so I had to get dinner with her. And Tuesday was the only night that worked, so I had to push the podcast. Don't hold it against me. Don't sue me. I apologize. But, you know, when your girls are in town, you've got to see them. And I haven't seen her literally since I went to the PCH with her back in February, which is six months ago, despite it feeling like it was yesterday. So, you know, we had to catch up. We had to do our thing. So the podcast had to get a push for a day, but all is all is well. We are here. We are thriving. This week's episode is jam packed. There is so much to talk about. I was literally, I was writing on my outline this week and I was like, how am I going to squeeze this into an hour? I had to had to chop some things. Like I had to, I'm sorry, Carrie Underwood getting the American Idol spot. I'm sorry, Adele, your show looked wonderful. Adele world looks insane, but they had to get cut. I was like, I need to make room for other things. So, you know, we had to cut. There was some, it's, it's a hard job being a podcast host and producer and pretty much the entire team for the podcast. But sometimes I feel guilty. I'm like, oh my God, I feel bad that I'm not going to talk about this on an episode. But like, Liza Minnelli releasing a memoir. I'm sorry, that's bigger news to me than Carrie Underwood replacing Katy Perry on American Idol. You know, push comes to shove. You do what you gotta do. But I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> we are getting way too ahead. So let's reel it back for a second. Um, yes, I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are all having fabulous weeks, fabulous weekends. Um, since we last spoke, I have ruffled the feathers of a certain demographic that, to be honest, I don't really care what they think about me because I will never be catering to them. But it's like straight Republican men really the worst type of person in the world. Um, I posted the clip of me talking about how the Olympics are gay last week, which if you listen to last week's episode, you know, I, I was saying, I mean, the men in Speedos, Lady Gaga, Celine Dion, the drag queens, like the Olympics are very gay. So I posted the clip, did my thing. And literally within like seconds, thousands of views, it hit and it, they ran with it. It went nuts. Unfortunately, not with the audience I really wanted it to resonate with, but the comments were hilarious. So any of my YouTube girlies or if anybody's interested in some some funny, you know, reading, some light reading to do, go check out the comments on The Real. I think I titled it The Olympics Are So Gay or something. They were having a field day with me. Oh my God, they had so much to say. And I was kind of eating it up. I was like, you know what? Keep commenting, feed the algorithm. I'll take it. Engagement is engagement. You know what I mean? Views are views. It is what it is. But yeah, they were they were not having it. They were very um they had a lot to say, to say the least. And <laughs> to that I say, I don't really care. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was fun to read. Um and I mean the Olympics just continued to get gayer. I mean, we literally watched a man lose the Olympic medal for pole vaulting because his dick was too big to get over the bar. Like he literally took the entire bar down with his penis. And you're going to tell me this isn't queer content. Try again, like argue with the wall. Come on, like, <laughs> let's be so serious. But that being said, yeah, if you want to see some fun, light reading, go check out those comments because it was it was hilarious. I've been having a field day reading them. Um, but yeah, the Olympics are gay. Nothing has changed. And um, yeah, we're going to, you know, keep the ball rolling. And before we get into our, you know, to pop to handle moments from the week and get into some more rapid fire things. I just need to make sure I am not the only one who is getting bombarded on TikTok with cucumber videos. Like I cannot scroll more than two videos without somebody making some sort of cucumber salad. And I'm not mad about it, but I'm just, I'm waiting to see when this cucumber shortage happens. Like it's going to happen, right? Like it, everybody is ordering cucumbers and buying cucumbers like it is their job as if their life depends on it and if everybody's eating a cucumber every single day there's not going to be enough cucumbers to go around like what happens when the world has a cucumber shortage and logan the guy who started this whole trend can't make his videos what is he going to do then i actually i did see him do sometimes you need to eat an entire onion in a day and he made like a uh, sliced onion concoction I don't think I could get on board with that. Eating an onion like that, I was like, mm, not for me. However, the cucumbers, I can fully get behind. And I definitely, it's on my list. I need to make, you know, make a few cucumber salads, really get in with the trend. But I'm really worried, like, what happens when everybody's eating a cucumber every single day and there's no more cucumbers for him to keep making his recipes and his videos? These are the things that I think about. Like, I, I'm genuinely worried for his content when the 
it, it's gonna happen when the sh cucumber shortage happens i don't know you heard it here first i'm i was waiting for the headline you know it, it happens every single time there's a big trend you can't find this you can't find that remember instant coffee in 2020 nobody could get instant coffee anywhere because we were all making our whipped fucking coffees at home crazy times this is like that wave again we're not gonna be able to find cucumbers for months they're gonna be out of stock no one's gonna be able to find them logan's not gonna be able to make a tiktok video about it it's a curse the internet is a curse it really is and with that let's hop into the show <laughs> you guys know the drill our new you know our new run of show we are starting out with our moments from the week that were just too pop to handle and starting out with i mean this is really for the gays and the broadway girls liza minnelli is releasing a memoir and i mean what's not to love about liza i if you don't know the wizard of oz is my number one all-time favorite movie of all time judy garland is like i mean she's literally hanging on my wall i have her all over the apartment i just i adore judy garland so obviously i love liza minnelli and i actually i've had this happen to me like three or four times where i mentioned that liza minnelli is judy garland's daughter and people are like flabbergasted like literally like jaw they're like what do you mean judy garland's daughter is liza minnelli and they're always so shook and as like a gay man i'm like it hurts me a little bit but i also love to be the one to educate people that that is in fact judy garland's daughter so if you didn't know that now you know but yes miss liza minnelli is releasing a memoir i'm very excited she said she wants to tell her story the way it's supposed to be told i guess it's kind of coming from different interpretations of her life and like different docu-series or movies things like that that have been made she's not happy with them she's like nope i'm done she said finally i was mad as hell over dinner one night i decided it's my own damn story and i'm gonna share it with you because of all the love that you've given me so very excited for that as you guys know i'm not the biggest reader but i do love a celebrity memoir so this is one i will definitely be tuned into and on other memoir news we have a very exciting update from britney spears's memoir the woman in me it's also kind of a full circle moment because if you've been listening since my first episode first of all thank you second of all i started the podcast the week or the week after that britney's memoir came out last year and it was one of like our first like big topics that we talked about and now it has come out this week that universal pictures will be putting out a biopic of britney spears's memoir the woman in me it will be directed by john m chu which can i just for one second does john m chu only go by john m chu does he ever just go by john chu i i was do i was like putting things together for the outline and i was like you know just grabbing all the info and obviously i know who john chu is but like i was it dawned on me i was like is he a three namer like does he always have the middle initial is that his thing like do your thing i could care less but i couldn't find a single article where he didn't have the m and i thought that was interesting like should i go by andrew g nukatola like should we all start putting our middle initial in every time that we talk about our names like I don't know. I thought that was interesting. I was like, huh, I love that for him. You know, we love a triple threat. <laughs> so yes, John will be directing the biopic and Mark Platt, who is also producing Wicked, is producing this. Aside from also being Ben Platt's father, he has done La La Land, Honey with Jessica Alba, Legally Blonde, Little Mermaid. Like he has, he's done his fair share. You know, I feel like he's, he's definitely not going to pay Britney any disrespect. And Britney herself tweeted that she's very excited for the project that she's working on with him coming up. So clearly she's involved. I don't think they're going to do this in any way that isn't putting her in a positive light i mean it's based on her memoir so obviously it's going to be uplifting and telling her story the way that she entails it to be so very excited for this some weird things that are happening though felicia who is britney's like longtime assistant from years ago and she was very prominent in britney's life she was like pretty much one of the only people who really looked out for her and her well-being back in the day they don't work together anymore and they don't speak at all if and if they do it's like very minimal i think they probably spoke maybe when the memoir came out but to our knowledge they are not really in contact she was speaking to tmz which just made me feel really odd i was like you were like one of the people that britney trusted her entire career and now you're speaking to tmz about the biopic like it kind of just rubbed me the wrong way i don't know but she said that she has lots of ideas of who she wants to play britney who she wants to play herself because obviously she's featured in the memoir as well so weird that she is talking to tmz and like making not making it about herself but like I don't know it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way i was like why are you you were like britney safe person in her career why are you talking to tmz even if you guys aren't still working together or like i don't know it just something about it felt very weird but the point that you know she made is who's gonna play britney because 
who can fill those shoes. Like those are, those are big shoes to fill, especially when it's the biopic of her life based on her own memoir. I mean, there's been so many names thrown around. Addison Rae, Emma Roberts, Cindy Sweeney, Sabrina Carpenter. Somebody said Halsey, which I guess they were just kind of tying in for the, the lucky of it all, like the new song she just did. I think that's the furthest stretch I've seen. I don't think Halsey is playing Britney Spears in a biopic. I could see the rest of them though. Like Addison Rae, I mean, obviously like the pop girl, she's the definition of a pop star, could 100% see it. Emma Roberts, I mean, do I see the look? Not 100%, but like, it's Emma Roberts. Like she's not, she's never bad in anything. So I wouldn't be mad if she did it, but I also wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be like, wouldn't be my first pick, but we'll, we'll, we'll see, you know, you never know. Um, Sydney Sweeney, I mean, just like a gorgeous blonde. I think that's why she's on the list. I think she could do it. I think I could definitely see it. Um, I guess we will see. I don't know. And then Sabrina Carpenter, again, just like a pretty blonde. Could she do it? 100%. She's literally the definition of a pop star. So I guess we will see. I'm very excited to see how this plays out, to see who ends up playing Britney, to see, you know, how when it comes to life. I didn't really see any info on like when it's coming out, what the dates are, things like that. This is very, literally just bought the rights to the movie. So we're in very early stages of it, but I'm very excited for this. Excited to kind of get another way to see Britney's story come to life and share her side of the story because realistically, I feel like a lot of people didn't read her book because people who aren't fans of her weren't flocking to it. So maybe a movie will give other people a way to kind of get the story and, you know, understand, you know, the woman in her, for lack of a better word, but very exciting there. And on the topic of Britney, but shifting a little bit, the woman that seems to be on everybody's lips this week, rightfully so, Blake Lively. So she has been hot on her press tour for It Ends With Us, her movie that comes out this Friday. People are saying it's really, really good. It was getting some mixed signals of, I feel like it was like a year or so ago, maybe two years ago when those pictures from the set got leaked and she was wearing like the kookiest outfits we've ever seen in our lives. So it definitely, people were a little like, what, what the fuck are you wearing? Like, this is not, this is not the vibe for this movie, <laughs> but people are, people have seen it. They said that they're loving it. They're saying it's really good. So TBD, we'll see, you know, what people are thinking. But like I said, it comes out this Friday, very highly anticipated. I know people love the book, so we will see how that goes. But the premiere was last night here in New York, and she literally wore Britney's Versace dress from 2002 to the premiere because she wanted to pay homage to Britney. She said, Britney has meant so much to me forever. I'm forever a Britney stan. She went on to post a picture of Britney in the dress to her story and she was just saying like thank you so much for encouraging women to you know be themselves I think she said like you were one of the first women who made me feel like I should sparkle just really cute and like it just keeps going to show like Britney has raised a generation of so many people whether it is other famous people us regular folk like Britney Spears you will always be famous they can never make me hate you. Very excited to see the people's response to this Blake Lively movie because I know Colleen Hoover is very controversial. People kind of go back and forth with her. I don't really have an opinion. I don't read that often, to be completely honest, but we will see. I know this movie is very highly anticipated, so I'm excited for that. And while Blake Lively is just on her up and up right now for this press tour, she is also on the cover of the September Vogue issue, which I mean, the September Vogue issue was like the issue to be on the cover. So very exciting there. Interestingly enough, she is also on the cover with Hugh Jackman. So there was a few covers that they put out and then the photo shoot. The photo shoot was a reference back to To Catch a Thief. Um, she's playing like the robber in the situation, her and Hugh Jackman. It seems like they're on like a, um, they're on like a, not like a heist, but like they're on the run almost kind of thing. She looks gorgeous. When doesn't Blake Lively look stunning? I mean, she's literally perfect. Like she is beautiful. She looked gorgeous on the cover. I think this was a perfect time for this cover to come out with the movie. Like again, the September issue is the issue that you want to be on the cover. It's like the most coveted one. So I think this timing was perfect. And like, I think it's time that Blake Lively was, you know, it makes sense that Blake Lively is having her moment. She has this huge movie coming out. Ryan Reynolds just had his movie come out. Like the two of them are just like, on this up and up. I definitely was a little confused as to why Hugh Jackman was in the shoot and not Ryan with her. But I mean, Hugh is in the movie with Ryan. Obviously, they all have this like really fun, loving relationship. So not the strangest pick, but I was like, why wouldn't they do Ryan in the shoot with Blake and do Hugh Jackman? Maybe as part of the joke. I feel like they're all so just like funny and like always making some type of joke of like everything they do. So who knows? They all looked gorgeous. They always do. They're just like, beautiful people. So 
whoever's on the cover out of the three of them, they're going to look great. But yes, a very exciting time to be Blake Lively right now. We love to see it. And moving right along to our next moment that was just too pop to handle, The Simple Life is filming and I am so excited. Obviously, we know that Paris and Nicole are working on something for the 20th anniversary of The Simple Life, which again, just like Britney Spears, raised a generation. And they were seen at a Sonic earlier this week filming something <laughs> nicole was in a hot dog suit they were in their little sonic uniforms obviously paying homage to questionably one of the most iconic episodes of the original simple life like i i will never forget when nicole literally they're giving them their um the application at the beginning or like you know the job forms and they're telling them all right fill this out do your tax stuff and nicole and they're like all right now you have to figure out how, who you want to claim on your taxes and they're like what are taxes? <laughs> it's so good. Also, never remember, it was like 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> they're like sitting there eating their like lunch at 10 a.m. And they're like, what time do we have to work till? And they're like three o'clock. They're like, is it three yet? They're like, it's 9.45. Like <laughs> that show, what? that Like that is really peak reality television. Like that was such, such a pivotal moment in reality TV. And the fact that they're doing it again right now, I cannot wait just seeing these photos of them together. I'm very excited. I am curious because obviously on the original Simple Life, there wasn't as much at stake. They, they weren't grown adults. They didn't have families. Like they were very much just like two young hot it girls who wanted to go make a TV show and like run around and do whatever the fuck they wanted. Now, obviously they've established their careers a little bit more. They obviously drifted apart. They weren't friends for years. So like even the fact that they were doing this is so exciting because you know, they're just rekindling their friendship and doing that thing in that sense. But like, I, I'm very curious, like what limits they're going to push because like, they just didn't have a care in the world back then because they were just there for fun and like filming a TV show and like looking pretty doing it. But like now they have family, they have careers, they have businesses, they have, you know, they have other things at stake. So I'm curious, like where they push the bar and if they're going to play into like the stupid blonde again, because obviously they both said like, it was an act. They were doing it to be funny and funny they were so i'm curious to see like where they land and if they're just going to be doing this as like more reminiscent or if they're actually going to be like working at sonic again and doing all these other things regardless i will be seated i cannot wait for this simple life reboot to come back it's going to be so good i cannot wait we will definitely be recapping that when it comes about and then our final moment of the week that was just too pop to handle is actually something that happened today and it's definitely a mood shifter so i kept it at the end before we go into the rest of the show because it was just didn't really know where it fit it was one of those topics where i was like i don't want to not talk about it but i don't know how to talk about it without like completely putting a damper on the show but it is the Vienna Eras tour shows and then being canceled this week. So if you did not see, Taylor Swift was set to go on this week in Vienna on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and they did end up canceling the shows today. This is the first time any Eras shows have been canceled and only the second time in Taylor's career she has ever canceled a show. The first time being back in, I think it was like the 1989 tour, 24 or like 2014-ish. So that era, um, it was a show in Bangkok, I believe. She canceled it because of the person who was like elected into power when she would be performing there I think it just like I, I don't know something wasn't safe for her to like be there or like she wasn't aligning with what was going on that was like the only show she's ever canceled she's like known for not canceling shows and then unfortunately today I guess fortunately actually as, as upsetting as it is that the shows were canceled for the fans going um two men were arrested because uh, they were there was an ISIS connected terrorist plot to attack the concert in Austria later this week um they had a specific plan on how to carry out the attacks police found various chemical substances in one of their homes like they were fully ready to attack the stadium at some point during the three shows who knows when like doesn't matter when doesn't matter how like so terrifying thank god that they caught them and like figured this out before it happened that would have just been so devastating when it, anything ever happening at a concert let me rephrase anything ever happening to this extent is always so heartbreaking because like how can people be so evil but as somebody who loves going to concerts and is like their number one favorite thing to do in the world whenever i see news like this i just it breaks my heart because concerts are such a a escape for me it's like what i do what i look forward to it's like my happy place i always say it on here i'm like i am at my happiest when i'm at a concert i love live music i love going to shows like it is what i love to do so 
anytime I see any news like this, it just breaks my heart. And it's sad. Like we shouldn't be scared to go to go anywhere to, you know, obviously, especially here in America, like it is not there's you, you can you can't walk down the street without worrying about something happening, unfortunately. But they're especially like at a concert where you're like we're all going we're coming together for this one night this one like it's a celebration of your favorite artist of their music whatever it may be and for this to happen thankfully they figured it out before the shows went on it's so unfortunate that they had to cancel the shows but i'm fortunate it's fortunate that they were able to stop it and you know thankfully nothing did end up happening definitely a little like freaky to think about the shows next week and like continuing from there like if anything's going to continue to happen I'm sure they are watching this with like a you know super 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 close to see if anything happens if it's any like sketchy behavior and things like that but it's obviously so upsetting for the fans who travel but their safety is obviously top priority so really upsetting I didn't I know I don't like to ever you know like dampen the mood here we're a very upbeat a very fun happy positive podcast but this happened today and obviously we talk about the Eras tour a lot so it felt wrong not talking about it and not you know bringing it up because what the fuck people it, it, it's insane and and the comments online about people just like tying you know ISIS into it and like you know being people are just being openly racist towards the whole group of people and it's disgusting. People really need to like zip their lip and just be fortunate that like, hey, nothing happened. I understand like it sucks that maybe you flew or you were going to see Taylor and you've been waiting. I get it. But the tweets that I'm seeing and like the just flat out racist takes, we gotta we gotta nip that in the butt. <laughs> like, I get it. I understand it is devastating that you can't go to the Eras tour, but like you potentially could have died. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Let's keep the show going. <laughs> let's let's keep this show on the road because those were our two pop to handle rapid fire moments from the week. We are moving right along with the show and we are going into my Drew releases, which is our new music that came out last week and our new music that is coming out this week. And we had some hard hitters this week. It was a very exciting week for pop music. First and foremost, you guys thought Brat Summer was over. Mm-mm-mm. Charlie XCX releases the guest remix with Billie Eilish, which first and foremost, Billie has not collabed with an artist other than her brother in six years. So the fact that Charlie got her to do this, it is incredible. Charlie is just keeping Brat Summer alive. She is collecting these remixes and these pop girls like Infinity Stones. She has Addison Rae, Robin, Lord, now Billie Eilish. Like she is just on a rampage. And she said she was like, mm mm mm, Brat Summer is not over. We are keeping this party going and I am eating it up. This remix is so good. Billie's verse had me feeling some type of way. I was like, oh my God. Like, I know it's Billie Eilish and it's not, she's not like the most like femme woman ever. So like, it's not that crazy, but I was like, am I straight? Like, why is a, why is a woman making me feel this way? I was like, it was so hot. It is so good. I loved it. Charlie likes boys, but she knows I had to hit it. Like my God, Miss Billie had me feeling some type of way on this remix and I loved it. It is so good. And clearly the rest of the world is also loving it because it had the biggest debut for an all-female remix in global Spotify history. Her first number one hit on US Spotify since Fancy. She had 40% more streams on that day with 24.6 million streams in one day when the song was released. Like people were going nuts and they're still going nuts for it. Like this remix is so good. I love it. The video is so good. Ugh, Brat is just, Brat is the moment. I'm obsessed. It is so good. I cannot get enough. And somebody else I cannot get enough of is Casey Musgrave. We talked about it last week. She released Deeper Into the Well on Friday. So it was the extended version of Deeper Well that she released back in March, I want to say March or April. It was like early springtime. Um, so seven new tracks. And I think this was a really fun way to do it to kind of give us a breather with the album and then drop not only extended, but seven new songs. That's that's a whole EP. That's more than most people release on an EP. So very exciting. And these tracks complement the album so well. You can definitely tell that like they could have been placed into the album if she wanted them to be, but she just, you know, she picked the track list 
to be what it was. Ruthless, so good. Irish Goodbye, so good. Honestly, all the tracks were really good, but those were the two that really stood out to me. And I just, I love this era of Casey Musgraves. I feel like she is just like in her healing era. She is doing her little farmer's market moment. Like she is becoming one with nature. Her Saturn has returned and I love it. There's Casey Musgraves rarely misses. And I just, I love this album. I love this era. I know she's coming to New York in November and I definitely, definitely, definitely want to make sure I go to that show because I haven't seen her in a while. The last time I, I didn't go to Starcross, so the last time I saw her was, had to be like 2019, which is way too long. I have not seen her in way too long and I love the Starcross album, loving this album. Honestly, all of her albums are so good. So definitely on my radar to get tickets for that, but loving this extended version of the album. I thought it was such a smart way to do it. So with all the music coming out around the time that she released the album, I feel like people were just like jumping from album to album. So to release it now, it's kind of giving us a new resurgence with the album that I love because it's an incredible album. It's so good. And yeah, I thought that was like the perfect little, little add on and reminder like, hey, I'm still here. This album came out and it's great. Listen to it and hear some new things to, you know, refresh your memory and give you something new to sprinkle into your playlist. So loving this release from Miss Casey. And then we also had new music from Flo, which Flo just doesn't release bad music. They just continue to give us like Y2K, early 2000s, like R&B girl group vibes, which I love. I saw them at Guff Ball this year. They were incredible. And everything they've been putting out lately, I've been eating up. This new single is called Check. I'm loving it. It's pretty much they're keeping their man in check. Did you check this? Did you check that? Are you checking to make sure he's going to be good to you? It's a lesson that everybody needs to know. Sometimes you learn it the hard way. Sometimes you check beforehand and you know, you, you miss a bullet. You dodge a red flag, but I'm loving this. The video was so good. They do a little check on it uh, reference at the beginning, a little Beyonce moment, which they're so Destiny's Child coded in the best way possible. So I love that little nod there. Obviously check check on it like such a fun little play on words they look gorgeous in the video if you're not listening to flow you are missing out if you're into that like vibe that early 2000s r&b kind of girl group vibe so good they they don't release bad music there's not a single flow song i can think of that isn't so good so fun loving this release loving that i don't know they must have an album coming out this is like their third single they put out this year i want to say maybe second second or third somewhere in that range and there must be an album coming i i'm not like on top of their music releases like i listen to it when it comes out i always end up seeing it online like when it gets dropped but i'm not like the biggest in the know with them um but they must have an album coming out to some extent or maybe an ep regardless i will be listening to it i will be tuning in and you should too because they are fabulous and that wraps up our new music from last week but i have to give a shout out to my girl Alyssa. If you're listening to this, hello. She has been telling me for weeks. She keeps DMing me. She's like, oh my God, listen to this, listen to this, listen to that. Because she she always listens and she knows there's music that I don't cover and she wants me to listen to. She's sending it to me. And this week she sent me two pieces of music and they were so good. So first of all, hi Alyssa. Thank you for sending me some music, sending some recommendations. But they are Alessia Cara's new single, Dead Man, and Marin Morris's new EP, Intermission. Now, Alessia Cara, obviously, I loved her back in the day when she released that first album. I mean, here was like, you couldn't escape it. And I loved it. I love that song. I love that album. She has such a unique voice. And I think she's so talented and criminally underrated. I feel like she is so talented. Her writing style is so good, but I feel like she never gets the flowers that she deserves. And she has a new single out. It's called Dead Man. And I really, really liked it. Again, she just has such a unique voice. She has such like a style that is like, hers you know what I mean and she's so good I'm loving the track it was really really good I had no idea that she even released it so when Alyssa sent it to me and I was like oh my god Alessia Carr like where has she been it's been a minute I feel like since she's released anything and this was a great single to come back with and then Marin Morris now she is one who was never really on my radar just because you guys know like country music not always my thing I don't always go for it so I'm not always like inviting new country artists into my realm but Marin Morris I mean she's I feel like she's lately become more of like a like a moment you know she obviously she just came out as bisexual which we love she always has like bangers she always has like good music that comes out i just never dive into her but this new ep was so 
good. It's only five tracks, so it's really, really easy to get through and easy to just like throw it on. The opening track is called Cut and it has Julia Michaels on it, who I feel like there's just like another person who everybody always forgets how talented she is me included she is so good i loved it it is such a good way to open the album and then push me over is a bop it is so good the whole ep is so good but those two really stuck out to me and i love these releases i love finding artists that i wouldn't typically listen to and then i you know dip my toe into it and i end up liking it so thank you Alyssa. if anybody is interested in listening to any of these songs i just talked about you can always find them in my drew releases playlist on apple music and on spotify they're linked in my link in bio on instagram so you can find them there and then this week coming up we have some exciting releases as well first up we have Katy perry lifetimes which if you guys remember i was talking about uh you know women's world and all the controversy behind it i didn't hate the song i didn't love the song this one sounds a lot better but it's produced by Dr. Luke, which I'm just, I'd want to just like grab her and shake her by the shoulders and be like, what are you doing? Like, why are you continuing to work with this man? But we get a new single this weekend. I think it actually comes out on Thursday. Yeah, it actually comes out Thursday. So the same day you're listening to this, if you're listening to it on release day, the song should be out some point today. I want to say like four o'clock, five o'clock, which is a weird time for a US artist to drop a song, but do what you want, I guess. I don't know. But yes, Lifetimes comes out uh, this week, the second single from our upcoming album, 143. And then in other pop girly news, Miss Addison Ray, what an it girl. She is dropping Diet Pepsi this Friday, which I'm very excited. Tying back to the Britney of it all, I kind of hope she does like a Britney nod. I did a little story, a poll, and everybody was like, obviously she's going to do a Britney nod because if you remember back in the early 2000s, Britney was like the face of Pepsi for so long there's like that iconic interview she did where they're like she's like i really do like pepsi i really do um i just i hope she does some type of britney reference in the video it would not be the first time she's done some type of nod to britney those paparazzi pictures of her with the book that when it came out literally burned into my brain addison ray you will always be famous and i'm very excited for some new music from her it's been a minute since we got anything new from her very excited obviously she is a part of the brat universe so I'm eating it up. I'm very excited. And then we also have a new album coming out from Chloe. So not on my horizon at all. I had no idea she was even releasing any music, but she is releasing her new album, Trouble in Paradise, this Friday. And what's really exciting to me is she has a song with Hallie on it. So again, if you don't know Chloe, it's Chloe Bailey, Hallie Bailey. They are two sisters, Chloe and Hallie. They released Ungodly Hour as their last project together in 2020. And it is one of my all-time favorite albums. It is incredible their first album is incredible too they are just so talented i mean they're beyonce prodigies i've talked about how much i love them before they haven't released a song together since that album so the fact that there's a song with the two of them on it i am so excited i used to pray for times like this very excited i love chloe's last album i thought it was really really fun so i'm excited to see how this new album comes out and yes it is dropping on friday i cannot wait and those are our releases coming up this friday we will talk about them all next week and recap them and give you my thoughts and then this isn't a release that's coming out this week but it's i didn't really know where else to fit it into the show without you know making it a whole thing but kesha has announced that she is going to be re-recording tiktok which we all know and love is like her first single ever it's like her biggest still i think one of her biggest hits um she said she's going to re-record it when she gets the rights to it and she's going to include the new line that her and renee rap did at coachella so instead of wake up in the morning feeling like p diddy is going to be wake up in the morning like fuck p diddy she posted it on instagram today and she said i will re-record it when i have the legal rights to my first baby stands for so much much. It stands for fiercely protecting fun and unadulterated joy in myself and in others. The whole ride has been absolute insanity, but the joy is still riding. So clearly she is like in this new era of just like doing things for herself, which we love because she has gone through so much in her career. Everybody knows TikTok. I mean, it's literally like it was like the song of 2010, 2010, 2009, whenever it came out, it was everywhere. You couldn't escape it. And I mean, that Kesha is so much fun. So very excited for her to re-record this. Hopefully this is like the beginning of her getting the rights to all of her music back. And, you know, we just love to see Kesha thriving in the year 2024. It's what she deserves. It has been long awaited. And with that, let's move into the main part of the show. It's if I haven't already talked about so much, but it is Pop Girl Summer in full swing. Pop girls are taking over. And there are three pop girls specifically who are really just like riding the high of this summer. And it's Charlie XCX, chaperone and sabrina carpenter so let's get into it starting out with miss charlie we've already talked about her a bit but we're going to go into what 
a party she threw this weekend for her 32nd birthday. She, it, it looked like such a blast. If you did not see, I don't know how you didn't see it because it was everywhere. Everybody was at this party. Lord was there. Sabrina Carpenter was there. Rosalia was there. Billie Eilish was there. Addison Rae, Lucas Gage, Gabrielle, Alexa Demi, Glenn Powell, Gracie Abrams, Anya Taylor-Joy, Nelly Furtado, Tovlo, everybody was at this party and it looked so much fun my friend sean was actually there as well he's the one who posted the video of like lord and her dancing to a girl so confusing and it went super viral the party looked insane and it was just so reminiscent of lady gaga's 30th birthday if you remember lady gaga's 30th birthday like it was such a moment for the internet to this day nobody knows what happened at her birthday party but everybody was there like there's those pictures of lord and nick jonas leaving together and everybody's like why were they leaving together i mean taylor swift was there chrissy teigen was there like everybody and their mother was at lady gaga's birthday party those ndas must have been thick because there is nothing that has ever come out from lady gaga's 30th it's one of these like unsolved pop culture mysteries in my mind that I'm just like what the fuck happened but the paparazzi photos outside of Charlie's birthday was just giving that energy of like early 2000s birthday parties very like bimbo summit like Lindsay Paris and Britney out and about very much that obviously we hate the paparazzi at Tupac to handle but yeah, it was very remnant of those early 2000 moments and it was just giving Gaga 30th birthday and I was living for it obviously where we saw nothing inside of Lady Gaga's birthday. We saw a ton inside of Charlie's birthday. And I mean, the big ones really is Billy and Charlie performing guests together. We saw Lord and her performing, uh, or not performing, singing Girl So Confusing together. And then really just like the icing on top of the cake and my personal favorite part of the entire thing was Rosalia showing up with a bouquet of Parliament cigarettes. So funny. So just like, it's so brat. It was everything. I loved it. And yeah, it really, Charlie is just like riding out this brat moment. She is creating party culture again. Like, I feel like for a while we haven't really seen celebrities just like having crazy nights out. They kind of went through like the early 2000s phase of it where everybody was out and about doing their thing. And then now we've kind of gotten to this era where like they're so private and rightfully so. I understand like they, you know, they they deserve their privacy too but we don't really get to see like these crazy paparazzi shots of them like out late at night stumbling out of the bar where we used to see that all the time and it's not it's not you know my favorite way to see a celebrity and like know the paparazzi are invading their privacy but with the whole brat essence of it like it just made sense for these paparazzi photos of everybody to be leaving like super late they were all like clubbing together i'm sure there was you know lots of things going around inside that you know are or are not illegal but 365 party girl bumping that and we love to see it we just let you know keep up the brat summer keep it going keep the party rolling i love seeing party aesthetic being back and the next girl of pop girl summer who has just had like the craziest fucking weekend chapel roan she was literally i'm like are you okay she has to be exhausted this weekend alone, she did Lollapalooza After Party, Main Stage at Lollapalooza, Oshiga, and then Hinterland, which, to be completely honest, I had no idea what those last two festivals were. I Maybe I'm like a bad concert person, could have never heard of them, but she was there, so now I know what they are. <laughs> and there was like crazy lineups for them too. Like it was, SZA was there, I think Renee Rapp was at one of them. Like it was big lineups. I just, I don't know, these usually don't come across my desk, but obviously Lollapalooza I'm very familiar with. And she was pulling off the stops for every single one of these performances, which I just, I appreciate so much. She is committed to the bit. She is committed to chapel and she is going to give a show every single time she had looks for every single night they were literally back-to-back -back shows and she was like kicking ass on the stage in her little outfits she came out uh she had the wrestling outfit at Lollapalooza she was dressed as a nun at one point she was a fairy like she just knows how to pull a look out and just like go completely boss to the walls and I love it she is literally a drag queen 
and it is everything to me. Um, she was also getting some pushback because at one of the shows, I want to say it was when she was dressed as like the little fairy outfit. I forget what show it was at. I apologize. There was a lot going on, but she couldn't get like the skirt part of it off. I guess she wanted to take it off because it was falling. So her crew came out. They tried to like help her get it off. And in one of the videos you see her, she like snatches it away from the guy to kind of like rip it out of his hand and get it off herself. And everybody's like, it's not a good look for her to be acting like this so early in her career. She's being so snotty and bitchy and diva on stage. And I'm like, First of all, she was just trying to get her outfit off because she was literally performing. She was mid-song while this was happening. She just stepped on stage and she was already having a malfunction. I would be pissed too. And she is dressed to, like, she has such crazy levels to these outfits and there's so much thought and planning that goes into it. I would be pissed too if I went on stage and within the first song... It, there was a malfunction like she put so much thought and effort into all of these costumes and the designers and and she's very good about like sourcing from smaller artists and smaller designers to like give them their moment like I feel like I always see her working with really like local kind of like Instagram people and things like that where you know she could obviously get she could be dressed by whoever she wants at this point. She's like the biggest name in pop culture right now. And she's still really good about including the smaller artists and things like that to give them their moment. So she put so much thought and effort and, you know, into all of these outfits. I would be annoyed too if I had a malfunction right away. It's not the designer's fault. It's, it, it happens. You know what I mean? It's, it, it is what it is. But like the way people were instantly jumping down her throat because she looked like she was being a bitch for one second. People need to get a fucking life and get off the internet for a little bit because like it's not that deep. You're being so, so overdramatic. I can't. I can't take it. She also continued to do some fun little nods to, you know, shouting out her ex before uh, My Kink is Karma, which I loved. <laughs> at one of the shows, she said, I dedicate the song to my ex who was bragging that they dated me at a bar in my hometown. This is a message for your fiance. You should break up. <laughs> and she said at another show, uh, she said, this song is dedicated to my ex who literally called me an ungodly woman. What do you think about me now, bitch? And she was dressed as a nun. So I just love that she is fully... She, has, she doesn't give a fuck. So she's like, oh, you, you wanted to fuck me over and, you know, be a bitch then. And now you want to brag about that we dated and this and that. Fuck you. And I hope you and your fiance split up. I just, I love it. I love it. I love her. She can do no wrong to me. And she could do no wrong to the rest of Lollapalooza because she had the biggest crowd in Lollapalooza history. 110,000 people attend this festival every year. And there was about 80 to 90,000 people at her stage alone. This is now, I think, the third or fourth festival this summer alone who had her booked at a smaller stage when the festival lineup was announced and had to switch her or move her to another set because of how big the, the draw for her is. And that is just like icon behavior. It is what she deserves. She has been waiting for this moment for so long in her career. And see, the crowd always blows me away. The Lollapalooza crowd, this was a crowd I have never seen before and i literally i was saw her at gut ball and the crowd was insane and i feel like every single festival it just gets bigger and bigger this one was unfucking real imagine the entire stadium and then some of the eras tour in a field so not even like in seats they weren't nobody was elevated everybody was standing in a crowd, you guys know how a festival works. I'm not talking to idiots, you know what I mean? Like she's literally gonna have to go straight to stadiums. There's no way she's gonna perform in arenas. Like whatever her next tour is, there's no fucking way she is doing an arena unless she's doing 10 nights at the venue because the demand is so high. And like, I don't know the last time we saw somebody go straight to stadiums after one album. I don't know if anyone's ever really done that. Like. There's usually a little bit more. And I guess it will be after her second album, but like fucking crazy. She is literally, she has to do stadiums, right? There's no way. There's no way in hell she is stepping foot in Madison Square Garden. Like, just what is she gonna do? Radio City Music Hall? Absolutely not. Like, this is, this is to a level that we have not seen in a very long time. And I am so terrified to see how ever, how ever fucking chaotic this ticket sale will be when her tour goes on sale because it's going to be a bloodbath. That being said, not only is she pulling crowds like crazy at Lollapalooza, she is also 
killing it on the Spotify charts, on the Billboard charts. She had her first number one hit on Spotify this week with Good Luck Babe. She also had her first top 10 hit with Good Luck Babe on the Billboard Global 200 chart. And then Good Luck Babe had its new peak at number eight on Hot 100. A few weeks ago, I was saying how it was her first uh, top 10 hit with that number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. This week, it peaked at number eight. So she's just continuing to grow. All of her music is charting. Everything, it's just like this... This is something we have never seen before. It is insane. It is incredible. It is Chapel Roan's world and we are just living in it. And then to tie in Pop Girl Summer of it all, her and Charlie, so Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess and Brat, are competing against each other to, to be number one on the UK album chart this week. Uh, Chapel is currently in the lead. She has the most units, but Brat is like right behind it. And I just keep saying it is a pop girl summer. It is just, it is incredible. Brat this week went up to number nine on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, which is up five spots from last week. It peaked at number three, but now it's back in the top 10. Rise and Fall of the Midwest Princess went up to number four. It peaked at number two, but this week it rose four more units. Like it is just like these girls are killing it. And I love to fucking see it. And wrapping up our Pop Girl Summer segment, Sabrina Carpenter. I mean, she is just on top of the fucking world with the other two of them, really. The three of them are just like dominating and it's what they deserve. She joined the Billions Club for Spotify this week with Espresso. It was coming. We knew it was going to happen. This album has so many streams with only two songs out. I keep saying it, but it is just so crazy to know that this album is surpassing full albums that have come out. I'm pretty sure it just passed Cowboy Carter and overall streams. Like it is killing it in the streaming game and only two songs are out. It is incredible. But she was also at the Grammy Museum last week with Jack Antonoff, which if you're a Jack Antonoff hater, this is not the podcast for you. We stand Jack Antonoff in this house. <laughs> but she, there were some fun little tidbits that I think one of the bigger ones is the fact that she is teasing a deluxe version of the album. We did find out that the vinyls are going to have a deluxe uh, or a secret track on them, I guess, when they come out. So there'll be a song that isn't available on digital on all of the vinyls, which I'm very excited for. But she also hinted at the fact that there's some type of deluxe coming. So who knows when? Obviously, the album isn't even out yet. So it's hard to get excited for something when we don't even have the first part of it. But we will see. I'm sure she'll do some type of extended version there. So very exciting. And then even more exciting, she performed a new song for the audience called Slim Pickens. And just like in typical Sabrina fashion, it is, it's so funny. It's hilarious. She just, she's so good at being in on the joke and like making a joke and laughing at herself and just like taking things not too seriously, which is why I think she has such an appeal with people right now. Um, one of the lines that, that really just stuck out to me is, um, he doesn't know the difference between there, there, and they are. Clearly this girl is slim picking for lack of a better word, with her men. <laughs> and it's just funny. I love that she's in on the joke. I love that she doesn't take herself too seriously. I don't think anybody in her team takes it too seriously in that realm. Like they know she's just like making a joke, having fun, doing her thing. Um, before she performed, she said, this one's cute and I just wanted to sing it for you today. Super random of me, but it's called Slim Pickens and I hope you like it. It's so cute. It was fun. It was like an acoustic version. So not sure what it's going to sound like when it actually comes out. But regardless, I'm so excited for this album. It comes out in like, Two weeks has got to be. It's August 23rd, I believe, whatever that Friday is. So it's coming out very soon. I feel like that was so quick. But again, this year is flying by. So no shocker there. Um, and she also did an interview with Variety, which was very telling of like where she's at for this era and like what she's feeling and her, you know, what she what she put into this album and like how she's how she's putting it into the retrospect of her career. Something I thought was really interesting and she said that the album was completely done before she put any of the singles out. And she said, not that I would let the single success, you know, deter me from the original way that I was doing the album. But she said she's very happy that like the album was done and then she put the singles out because she's not able to then go back and like change too much. You know, like it's already finished. It's already in. Once it's in, it's in. So I thought that was really interesting and I'm happy to see that it's paying off the way that she wants to. And she also made a comment about saying how she, if you would have asked her a few years ago what her dream album is, it would not be this group of songs. So it's hard for her to ever say like what her dream album is because like 
she's not able to dream up what she can do every few years and leads me to the next point of her pretty much erasing her first four albums. So this is technically her sixth studio album, but she is saying to her it's her second album because it's her second big girl album. Her first four, they're definitely a little on the more... I don't want to say immature or like childish, but she was more with Disney. She had to be a little more PG with it. She obviously couldn't be, she, there's no way she was releasing like espresso, feather, anything like that in that era while she was on Disney Channel and doing all of that. So she's kind of like pushing those four to the side and kind of erasing them from her discography. She did say she was like, anybody who loves them and was there to support me during them, I love you so much. Thank you. She's obviously very appreciative of her root. And I don't think this is her erasing where she came from or, you know, trying to be like not proud of what she's done before. But I think it's very clear to show that like her first four albums and emails I can't send and what we've already seen of short and sweet there's a distinct difference in who she was then and now which is totally normal like look at any artist as they grow their music's gonna change the things that I would be doing at 16 are not what I would be doing now and I'm almost 30 so it makes sense like it is in the retrospect of anybody's life to like not really love or be too proud of things that you did when you were so young but i just thought it was funny that she was pretty much like yeah this is my second album i'm kind of disregarding the first four <laughs> very very funny and then i mean if you've been listening for a while you know that i'm obsessed with her and barry they are my favorite celebrity couple at the moment and there's been some rumor of them splitting up recently because of that tiktok she posted where she was like me cutting him off after he's not my number one i'm not his number one artist something along those lines so people thought that they broke up but they were alive and well Thank God, because I swear when they break up, if they break up, I hope they don't. But, you know, you never know. Um, it's, I, I'm going to be very sad because I love them together. I've said it before. I think they are such a fun, perfect match. And even if it is just like a fling for now, I think this is such a fun little relationship arc for them. But she said that he loved the song. Please, please, please. Obviously, she's in the video. He's obsessed with the lyrics. And I'm so grateful for that. She said, I don't want to sound biased, but I think he's one of the best actors of this generation. Getting him on the screen with one of my songs at the soundtrack made the video be better and all the more special, which it's just so cute. They don't really give us much from their relationship. Relationship. You know, they're not like out and about posting together, doing their thing. They're kind of, they give us like teasers here and there, but they're not very public. Like even while they were, before they went to their first like public appearance together, they had been rumored and spotted together for a while. So they're very, not too private, but they don't give us too much, which I think is why people are quick to assume that they break up if she says anything kind of alluding to it. But they are alive and well, and I'm very excited for any more Sabrina and Barry content they will give us because I will eat all of it up. I will take it all. I love them. I love Sabrina Carpenter. I love Chapel Roan. I love Charlie XCX. I love Pop Girls. I just love Pop Girl Summer. I am, it is too pop to handle. It is quite literally too pop to handle, but I want more. <laughs> And speaking of Too Pop to Handle, our last little news segment that we're going to hop into, the VMA nominations have been announced this week, and I love the VMAs. I have been three times. I went in 2016 when Beyonce did her big performance for Lemonade. I went in 2019, which was the year that Taylor opened it, um, when she did You Need to Calm Down and Lover, I believe it was. And then I went in, I went last year, so 2023. Um, Taylor was there, obviously. Uh, Olivia performed. Megan and Cardi performed. The VMAs are just so much fun. They're honestly my favorite night on Twitter and they've been my favorite night on Twitter since I made a Twitter. So any year I get to go is so much fun. I just also just like love live tweeting it. It is one of my favorite nights to be on the internet and I'm so excited for us to recap the VMAs this year. Cannot wait. But like I said, the nominations are here. So we're going to run through them really quick. I'm not going to go too in depth with them. We're just going to call it what it is and get on with the show. But coming in with the top nominees, Taylor Swift has 10 Post Malone got nine, Ariana Grande had six, Eminem had six, and Sabrina Carpenter had six. Eminem definitely stood out to me. I was like, in this list, he just like didn't fit. Not to discredit him, I don't think he doesn't deserve to be nominated. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't listen to if Carolyn, Carolyn, if you're listening to this, I apologize. Cover your ears. I don't listen to Eminem like that. I don't know what he's put out. Seeing him on this list and especially so high up, I was like. He's definitely, you know, the odd one out, but do your thing, I guess, Slim Shady. 
keep it up <laughs> for video of the year which is obviously like the big one at the video music awards we have ariana grande we can't be friends billy eilish lunch doja cat paint the town red eminem houdini SZA, snooze taylor swift Fortnite. we can't be friends is still my favorite song of the year my favorite video of the year i'm banking on that one i'm obsessed with it song of the year we had texas hold'em loving on me not like us espresso Fortnite, lose control Artist of the Year, Ariana Grande, Bad Bunny, Eminem, Sabrina, SZA, Taylor. Best New Artist, we had Benton Boone, Chapel Roan, Gracie Abram, Shibuzi, Teddy Swims, Tyla. And Best Pop Nominee was Camila Cabello, Dua Lipa, Olivia Rodrigo, Sabrina Carpenter, Tate McRae, Taylor Swift. And Charlie XCX was completely robbed. I don't want to make this whole episode about her, but the fact that she wasn't nominated for like Best Pop, Song of the Year, anything... When Brat is such a movement, I mean, come the fuck on. Like, definitely a little, a little slighted there. But uh, the other girls got their, they got their flowers. And Charlie is nominated twice. She got Best Cinematography and Best Art Direction. So at least she wasn't completely snubbed. But very happy to see that a lot of our two pop to handle girlies are nominated. Obviously, Ariana, Taylor, Beyonce, Sabrina, SZA. Like, so many of the people that I love and I talk about so often on the show. Dua, Olivia, Tate McRae. I'm very excited to see, you know any of them win so we will see hopefully i get to attend the vmas this year they are in new york so we will see if anybody at mtv is listening hit my line i am very available but if not i will be tuned in and live tweeting but yeah i just love the vmas they're such a fun night they're like they're like gay christmas you know what i mean it's like it is such a fun night to be online to be a pop culture girl and i think that's going to be such a fun way it'll be like a month before our year so i think like having the vmas as one of our last episodes before we hit a year on the podcast really is just like a fun little bow on top of a year of pop culture updates so that is coming up september 10th and that brings us to the end of the show no tv recap this week i i know i'm behind i need to catch up on drag race we have another season of drag race starting soon i need to catch up i will summer is wrapping up and i feel like everyone is everyone's in new york everybody i have plans every weekend things going on I will catch up. I will watch Canada vs. the World. I will be watching uh, Global All-Stars. I think that's the only thing really on TV right now. We're going to get into like the fall TV soon, which will be a lot to recap. And I'm going to have to, you know, we're going to have to figure out what we're going to recap and what we're not going to talk about because I feel like fall TV is always like so overwhelming. But we will cross that bridge when we get there. But the show is not over yet, of course. We are ending the show like we do every single week with my yes and my mess of the week. My yes being something I'm loving and my mess being something I am not loving. And my yes this week, kind of a piggyback off of last week's main topic of the Olympics. But I just have to give it up for the U.S. women's gymnastics team. They are so incredible. All of the Olympic, like, they, it's it's been a killer, I feel like, Olympic year. Whatever you want to call it. Olympic cycle. I don't know. I feel like it's been, like... It's been so fun to keep up with. Like I said last week, like it's one of the first years I feel like every single person is so into it. I don't know if it's just me. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's a me thing. Regardless, the women's U.S. gymnastics team killing it. I am. It is. I don't love to be from the U.S. a lot, but when those girls are out there doing their thing, my pronouns are USA. And when we had the all black girl podium, I was living. It was the first time it's ever happened. We had Rebecca, Simone, Jordan up there doing their thing. All three of them did their numbers to Beyonce. All of them killed it. It is just, it's been so much fun. And especially just like having Simone back this year after everything that went down a few years ago. And so many people were so rude and cruel to her for dropping out for her mental health, which is such a normal and like admirable thing to do. And then, oh my God, when uh, they didn't know if Jordan got a medal or not. And then at the last second, they found out that she got bronze. Everyone freaked out. It was so, it was just like such a moment to see. I loved it. It was such like a, that was one of those moments when I, when I saw it happen, I was like, oh, this is going to be something everybody remembers for the rest of their lives. And I just, I couldn't let the Olympics end this weekend without giving another nod to them because they really have just been like, making me proud to be an American, which is not something I say often. <laughs> also, before we actually go into my mess, and maybe this is a yes, maybe it's not, I am feeling so incredibly hopeful after seeing who Kamala picked for her vice president. I am going balls to the walls. I am so excited. I didn't know much about 
Tim and I didn't know much about like who he was honestly before that but I've done a lot of research in the past two days just to like see who he is and what he's done and you know what he stands for and I mean he has literally made a national Beyonce and national Taylor Swift holiday in Minnesota. Do I need to say anything more? <laughs> I am very very happy with who she picked for her vice president. I am feeling very hopeful. Again, I don't like talking politics on the podcast, but I'm actually at a point where I don't really care because it's my show and I can talk about whatever I want. I am feeling great. I'm feeling very hopeful. Please make sure you are registered to vote. There is 90 days, I think, until the election. I always have vote.org linked down below in the episode, whether it's on Spotify, on YouTube, you can always go there. It takes 15 seconds to check your voter registration and it takes like less than a minute to register and you can register up until like October 25th. You have a lot of time before you have to register for the election. So make sure you're registered. Make sure you're educating your friends. I am so excited for this Democratic ticket. It is so exciting. I'm feeling very hopeful. I'm feeling very good, which is crazy because a few weeks ago I was like, wow, we're fucked. Remember my, my mess a few weeks ago was just like the state of the country when after Biden and Trump did their, uh, <laughs> their debate. I am, it is like a 180 that I'm feeling and Hopefully, you know, things come through. Hopefully everybody gets out and votes. I'm feeling very hopeful. But yes, my yes this week is Simone, Jordan, and Rebecca. <laughs> Moving on to something I am not loving this week, my mess. I am just as disappointed as all of you guys are. And I don't, I don't come saying this proud. I don't come to this like excited for this to be my mess because sometimes I have a mess and I'm like, oh, I cannot wait to rip this motherfucker to shreds. But Travis fucking Kelsey, why are you on stage with Morgan Wallen? Like, come on, we were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. And like, we got to call it out. You know what I mean? Like Morgan Wallen is a piece of shit. He's not a great person. I'm actually very shocked that Travis would be there. I, I'm not that I'm not that shocked that he would be into his music, to be honest. Like it is what it is. But I'm shocked that he would like publicly go out and like walk on stage or like walk out to the stage, whatever he did with him. And I just am like I don't know. I mean obviously I'm it doesn't I'm not like Travis isn't saying the things that Morgan Wallet has said and like Travis isn't the one throwing chairs off the roof and making, you know, these decisions. But I'm just like it's almost I, my other contender for mess this week was Kelani at Chris Brown. It's like, I'm not mad at them. I'm just mad for the fact that like these shitty people, Chris Brown and Morgan Wallen and whoever else, you know, these other artists who just get away with pretty much murder have people who support them. And there's people who are in like these, these influential roles. I mean, Travis Kelsey is like the biggest name in football and he's almost encouraging the behavior that he does by doing this even if he's not directly saying it and i'm sure i don't think him and i mean i hope him and morgan wouldn't be like best of friends or good friends i i, I don't know it is to say that it, morgan was performing at the chief stadium so like maybe that's part of it regardless it just made me feel really icky and i didn't love it and like i've been so pro travis and so into travis and taylor and i still am obviously like this isn't going to make me hate travis but like this is like a slap on the wrist for him i'm like this is like a this is like one strike down for you you know what i mean like we were all rooting for you uh, but it is what it is i couldn't not talk about it I didn't want you guys to think I was like, oh, it's fine. It's Travis. Like, th no, like I. one thing about me is like, I'm going to call out somebody when they need to be called out. I'm going to, uh, even if they are my favorite artist, fav anyone I, I like, I'm going to be like, mm, don't love that. Like, I'm very not afraid to call somebody on their shit if I need to, even if you are Travis Kelsey. It is what it is. Not thrilled about that. Not loving it. Definitely messy. But that's our show. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to this week's episode of Two Pop to Handle. If you liked what you heard and you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know how you're enjoying Pop Girl Summer because I know I am eating it up. I am loving it. Make sure you hit subscribe. If you're listening to us as a podcast, make sure you leave us a five-star rating. I actually, oh my god, I got a, a one-star rating last week. I'm not losing sleep over it, but I was like, oh, we have a hater. So if you would like to go leave me a five star rating and help me get my rating back up to like 4.9, I would love that. So leave me a five star rating, leave me a review, let me know what you're thinking. If you would like to follow us on social media, we are at 2 to handle on all platforms, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. I've been posting a lot more on threads lately. 
If there's a platform, I'm pretty much yapping on it and I'm at too pop to handle. And just because one account isn't enough, you can also follow my personal. I am at Andrew Nucatola on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, you name it, I am there. And with that, I will catch you guys in next week's episode. Bye.